Welcome to Roadshow's Autocomplete, your weekly roundup of the biggest news in the automotive world. This week, we have news on Lamborghini's trip into space, Mazda's Miata restoration parts program, and Ford's Flex getting canned. But first, let's start with that FCA and PSA merger. It seems like Fiat Chrysler has been in one of those always the bridesmaid, never the bride type situations for years now, as it's been casting about looking for a company to merge with. Most recently, it was in talks with Renault, but not only did the French government, a major stakeholder in that company, pee in FCA's Wheaties, so too did Nissan and Mitsubishi, both companies with which Renault is allied. But while that didn't work, FCA clearly couldn't get the French out of its mind, and now it's announced its intent to merge with PSA Group that owns Peugeot, Citroën, Opel, and Vauxhall, among others. Both companies confirm their intent and will likely become a $50 billion Voltron of Franco-Italo-American automotive manufacturing. Lamborghini's going to space. Well, kind of. It's working with a research hospital in Texas to send some samples of carbon fiber up to the International Space Station for six months of testing to see how temperature extremes and cosmic radiation can affect the supermaterial. At the end of its six-month test period, the data gained will be used to create better types of carbon fiber for cars and for things like medical prosthetics. Pretty cool, huh? Tesla ruffled a lot of feathers when it decided to forego the whole dealer franchise model of sales for its cars, focusing on online sales instead. But since then, it's proven to be pretty successful for the brand. So much so that now Porsche is trying to get in on the fun with a new pilot program offering online sales from 25 dealers across the US. Porsche didn't call it specifically which dealers were participating in the program, but it did state that they spanned the entire country. So odds aren't terrible for you being able to snag your next Porsche while sitting at home in your sweatpants. It's been a long time coming, but the commercial version of Tesla's solar roof is here and available for purchase by the general public. This newest version is Tesla's third, and according to CEO Elon Musk, it's going to be competitive in cost with a new roof plus the cost of traditional solar panels. But, you know, it's going to look cooler and stuff. The big T plans to offer the system through normal roofing contractors who go through some kind of special Tesla training and expect the system on an average size roof to take about 8 hours or less to install. The LA Auto Show is just around the corner, and that means it's time to start getting excited for lots of new models and concepts from companies like Volkswagen. In fact, VW has already announced its plans to unveil its next ID electric concept at LA's Peterson Automotive Museum as a standalone event. We don't know much about the concept that's getting its debut, but we can bet that its name will be ID and then a word with two Z's in it. The unveil is scheduled for November 19th, and Roadshow will be there as the sheet comes off. Ford's Flex was always a car that didn't make a ton of sense, but that we always secretly kind of liked. Its minivan meets truck meets SUV styling was just oddball enough that it didn't necessarily find the kind of popularity that Ford hoped for during the last decade of SUV insanity, but it did manage to find a bit of a cult following and a surprisingly dedicated fan base. With the ability to seat seven and carry a ton of cargo, it was practical. And thanks to its low stance and more car-like driving characteristics, it was well suited to family duty too. And when equipped with the awesome EcoBoost V6 engine, it became a bit of a secret hot rod. We're always sad when weird cars go the way of the Dodo, so we'll definitely be pouring one out for the Ford Flex tonight. Ford's Sync in-car infotainment system has had a fairly rough history. The first couple versions were pretty crappy, and Sync 3, while much better than the other two, is still only pretty okay. Ford is planning on changing that with a comprehensive update to the system that it's calling, rather unsurprisingly, Sync 4. Updates include wireless Apple CarPlay and massive new 15-inch touchscreens, as well as over-the-air updates, and more. We're pretty interested in getting our greasy mitts all over that big touchscreen and seeing how it all works, but looks like we'll have to wait until next year to do so. People love Miatas. And we're not only talking about automotive journalists either, because the cars are so fun, light, affordable, and unintimidating that you kind of have to love them. The first generation of Miata, also known as the NA, is not only the first one to go into production, it's also first in most people's hearts. The problem is that the earliest ones are now around 30 years old, and they've been used and abused and tracked within an inch of their life. Finding a nice one at this point is really hard, and that's a shame. So to help fix that problem, Mazda has instituted a restoration parts program, where it's consulted with Miata clubs and Miata specialist shops to find the best parts to remanufacture with modern techniques and materials. The list of parts is long. There are around 1,100 part numbers on it, and we're hoping that the program is successful so other Japanese makes can take a hint and start up their own heritage parts programs. Pretty much anything that's unintentional that happens when you're driving a car is going to be a bad thing. For example, 
Remember a bunch of years ago when Toyota had problems with unintentional acceleration? Yeah, not great. Now it looks like General Motors is having the exact opposite problem, where approximately 600,000 Silverados, Sierras, Suburbans, and Yukons are braking unintentionally. Also not great. Anyway, the problem stems from some faulty software in the electronic braking control system not playing nice with wheel speed sensors while the vehicle is in four-wheel drive. So the fix will probably be pretty simple. Until then though, GM says that as long as you don't put the vehicle into four-wheel drive, there won't be any problems. Which is, you know, good to know with winter approaching in most of the US. That's it for Autocomplete this week. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay notified of all new videos on Roadshow, and we will see you again next week.